each new day brings new opportunities you have to search to be able to find these opportunities each new day offers the chance to start afresh to achieve those things you most desire when you arise in the morning think of what a precious privilege is to be alive to breathe to think to enjoy to love to learn to study a very pleasant morning to everyone so welcome to this new day and we call this new day as bedness day we were taught as little children there are seven days in a week and we have learned it by heart and we say it by our rote memory that today is bedness day but have you ever asked a question who created the word bedness day or where did the name bedness day come from the name bedness day actually derives from two mighty but distinct gods the old english word for bedness day indicates that the day was named from for the germanic god odin in roman's languages the name is derived from the roman god mercury for example wednesday is mercredi in french and miercuri in romanian odin also known as odin and mercury have been associated since scandinavian and roman cultures cross paths and the word and supervision the earth and sky were created from the dead body of a giant called emir odin also created the first man and woman from an ash tree and an alder as if fashioning the human race wasn't enough odin also established the laws of the universe and therefore mercury was the messenger to the gods along with being the patron a patron of science the arts travelers and athletes and today he is one of the most widely recognized gods usually he is depicted wearing a winged helmet and sandals now you will ask me a question how did wednesday become a day starting around 1965 wednesday began being referred as a hump day because this comes the middle of the traditional work week so arriving at wednesday symbolizes that we have made it over the hum meaning meaning to say once a day is complete at least and the weekend week end is in sight i hope this piece of information was useful to all of us it's time to bow our heads bend our heads slow and invite god into all that we do today please close your eyes and join me in the following prayer this is a student's prayer composed by saint thomas aquinas creator of all things true source of light and wisdom origin of all being graciously let a ray of your light penetrate the darkness of my understanding take from me the double darkness in which i have been born an obscurity of sin and ignorance give me a keen understanding a retentive memory and the ability to grasp things correctly and fundamentally grant me the talent of being exact in my explanations and the ability to express myself with thoroughness and charm point out the beginning direct the progress and help in the completion we make this prayer in the name of the almighty god amen and let's move on to feed our minds 
with the thought of the day or thought for the day teachers open the doors but you must enter by yourself this is a chinese proverb i repeat once again teachers open the doors but you must enter your, by yourself what is the meaning of doors door is a symbol of possibilities when the door is open either you can get in or you can decide not to get in by making an entry into the door you are having an access to the possibilities which are inside that particular area which allows you to make a way through the door so therefore door symbolizes a bundle of possibilities and therefore teachers open the doors means teachers show you are the ones who are instruments to open the bundle of possibilities in front of you but the second line goes very clearly but you must enter by yourself people can only show you the door the decision to enter is yours whether you want to enter or not to enter is your decision and that decides your destiny in the future the bundle of possibilities the bundle of opportunities are in front of you which are laid open by the great gurus in the form of our teachers in the school whether you would like to make use of those possibilities and enter and explore and to make your life the future a great a piece of success is up to you so teachers open the doors but you must enter by yourself it's time to test whether we have paid keen attention to yesterday's class there are certain questions placed for you to test your understanding first we are all dash before our mother this is taken from the quotation of the late president of india pranab mukherjee the second question late pranab mukherjee was the dash president of india from dash to dash Question number 3 International Tiger Day is observed on dash Question number 4 What is the meaning of antiseptic Question number 5 Tiger has dash like soft paws Question number 6 Was the tiger capable of showing its power to the visitors and terrorize them State reasons Question number 7 How does the tiger control his anger? Why is the tiger angry? Why is he angry? So take your time quickly answer the questions and we move on to the next part the final part of the poem the poetic analysis. Having completed the explanation of the poem in the previous class I thought I could take up another 45 minutes to explain to you how to analyze a poem you may be asking what is the meaning of poetic analysis poetic analysis or poetry analysis is a process of investigating a poem's form content structural semiotics semiotics means the study of signs and symbols and their use or interpretation and therefore poetic analysis or poetry analysis is a process of investigating the poems form content structural semiotics and history in an informed way and the purpose of this poetical analysis is with the aim of heightening one's own and others is understanding and appreciation of the work and therefore we take up this poetical analysis of investigating the form content and structural semiotics and history of this particular poem with the purpose of making our understanding better our understanding 
and others understanding better and thus we begin to appreciate find the novelty and the creativity in the works of the writer or the poet and therefore like poetry itself poetry analysis can take many forms and it can be undertaken for many different reasons a teacher might analyze a poem in order to gain a more conscious understanding of how the poem achieves its effects in order to communicate this to his or her students a writer learning the craft of poetry might use the tools of poetry analysis to expand and strengthen his or her own mastery a reader might use the tools and techniques of poetry analysis in order to discern all that the work has to offer and thereby and thereby gain a fuller more rewarding appreciation of the poem and therefore this is the meaning of poetical analysis or poetry analysis there are various steps in this particular journey called poetical analysis or poetry analysis the first step is read the poem twice and aloud second is and the literal meaning and the theme third is to look at the title fourth to look at the tone of the poem number 5 is to look at the structure of the poem number 6 is to look at the sound and rhythm of the poem and number 7 is to observe the language and the imagery of the poem and finally to arrive at the conclusions of the study that we have made in this entire process of poetical analysis therefore the first step in the poetical analysis is to read the poem twice and aloud why should we read the poem twice and aloud read the poem all the way through at least twice and read it aloud listen to it because poetry is related to music so the sound is important we all listen to our favorite cds the music many times the principle is the same it takes time to fully appreciate and understanding a work of art so make a note of your first impressions or immediate responses both positive and negative you may change your mind about the poem later but these five first ideas are worth recording this is the meaning of the first step read the poem twice and aloud the second step in this poetical analysis is to understand the literal meaning and the theme so how do we understand the meaning of literal meaning and the theme before you can understand the poem as a whole as a whole means fully you have to start with an understanding of the individual words particular words get a good dictionary look up and write down the meanings of words you don't know words you sort of know any important words even if you do not know them maybe they have more than one meaning example bar b a r maybe they can function as different parts of speech It can be a noun or a verb if the poem was written a long time ago maybe the history of the word matters or maybe the meaning of the word has changed over the years for example jet did not mean an airplane in the 16th century 16th century an etymological dictionary like the oxford english dictionary can help you find more about the history of a particular word and therefore use an encyclopedia or the internet to look up people and places mentioned in the poem these allusions may be a key to the poet's attitudes and ideas so as you pay attention to the literal meanings of the words of the poem you may see some patterns emerging these patterns may relate to the diction of the poem does the poem or does the poet use street talk a slang formal english foreign language phrases or jargon your goal now that you have understood the literal meaning is to try to determine the theme of the poem the purpose the poet has in writing this poem the idea he wants to express so in order to discover the theme however you need to look at the poem as a whole and the ways the different parts of the poem interact and therefore understand the words and try to uncode the theme hidden all through the poem 
the third step in this poetical analysis is title now how do you search for the title and how do you find the theme so therefore start your search for the theme by looking at the title of the poem itself it was probably carefully chosen what information does it give you what expectation does it create for example the poem that we have a tiger in the zoo does the title tell you the subject of the poem does the title label the poem as a specific literary type if so you should check what characteristics such forms have and discuss how the poet uses the rules is a title an object or event that becomes a key symbol and therefore with the title try to uncode the theme which is hidden the title is carefully chosen and it is pregnant with lot of meaning and the fourth step in this poetical analysis called tone next you might consider the tone who is speaking listen to the voice is it a man or a woman someone young or old is any particular race nationality religion etc suggested does the voice sound like the direct voice of the poet speaking to you expressing thoughts and feelings or is a separate character being created someone who is not necessarily like the poet at all a persona is the speaker addressing someone in particular who or what is the poem trying to make a point win an argument move someone to action or is it just expressing something without requiring an answer example a poem about spring may just want to express joy about the end of winter or it may attempt to seduce someone or it may encourage someone to go plow in the field what is the speaker's mood is the speaker angry sad happy cynical how do you know this is all closely related to the subject of the poem what is the speaker talking about and the theme why is the speaker talking about this what is the speaker trying to say about this subject so listen to the voice and discover the riches behind this voice and the person who is speaking to us in and through this poem and the fifth step in this poetical analysis is called structure what does this mean by structure it means how is the poem organized how is it divided up are there individual stanzas or numbered sections what does each section or stanza discuss how are the sections or stanzas related to each other poems don't usually jump around randomly the poet probably has gone has some sort of organization in mind like steps in an argument movement in time changes in location of viewpoint or switches in mood if there are no formal divisions try breaking down the poem sentence by sentence or line by line the poet's thinking process may not be absolutely logical but there is probably an emotional link between ideas for example you might ask a friend to pass mustard for a hot dog and suddenly be reminded of a summer romance and a special picnic it doesn't look rational from the outside but it makes emotional sense a very controlled structure may tell you a lot about the poet's attitude to world the subject is it a very formal topic is the poet trying to get a grip on something chaotic a free poetic form is also worth examining what is appropriate or revealing about the lack of structure
and therefore pay attention regarding the way the poem is organized the poet has a reason the poet is trying to communicate a emotional an idea to discover in and through the journey that you make into the structure we shall move on to the the last step in the poetical analysis titled as sound and rhythm poetry is rooted in music what is important is to listen to the rhythm and the way it affects the meaning of the poem just like with music you can tell if a poem is sad or happy if you listen carefully to the rhythm also heavily stressed or repeated words give you a clue to the overall meaning of the poem does the poem use special effects to get or grab your attention some words take time to pronounce and slow the reader down example the plow man homeward plods his weary way echoes the slow plodding pace other words can hurry the reader along example run the rapids if you are unfamiliar with the terms alliteration assonance and one of atophia you can look them up and see if they apply to your poem but naming them is less important than experiencing their effect on the work you are examining does your poem rhyme is there a definite rhyme scheme pattern of rhymes how does the scheme affect the response to the poem is it humorous monotonous childish like a nursery rhyme or their internal rhymes rhymes within the lines instead of at the ends if you read the poem aloud do you hear the rhymes they could be there without being emphasized how does the use of rhyme add to the meaning certain poetic forms or structures are supposed to follow specific rules of rhyme and meter if you are studying a poem of this type ask yourself if the poet followed the rules or broke them and why different parts of a poem may have different sounds different voices may be speaking for example there are lots of possibilities no matter what though the sound should enforce the meaning let me explain to you what is rhyme scheme which is one of the requirements for you to appreciate a poem uh, that is important at this stage for you a look at the first stanza of the poem he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his ray, cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage the last words of every sentence is being highlighted because that is where the rhyme scheme can be easily decoded write down those words stripes cage quiet and rage stripes indicate the rhyme scheme a second word cage there is no connection between the first word and the second word so you write it as b look at the third word quiet there is no connection between a b or c you write it as c and lastly you write rage there is a connection between the second word and the fourth word cage rage both are same the rhyming scheme is the same and therefore the cage was coded as b and therefore we also code the last word rage as b and therefore the rhyme scheme that we have is a b c b and the words cage and rage are called rhyming words now you can take the second stanza lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where the plum deer pass look at the rhyme scheme take all the final words of every sentence the last word of every sentence every line shadow grass hole and pass and you try to write the rhyme scheme shadow can be coded as a grass there is no connection resemblance between shadow and grass or we code it as b look at hole there is no connection between resemblance between shadow grass and hole that we code it as c last you write pass 
that is resemblance that is connection between the second word grass and pass and therefore we use the same code b and therefore we have the rhyme scheme as a b c b and the rhyming words are grass pass and we have come to the end of the poetical analysis and there are certain things that we need to keep in mind as a whole what is the poet trying to say how forcefully does he or she say it or with what feeling which lines bring out the meaning of the poem does the poet gradually lead up to the meaning of the poem or does he or she state it right at the beginning the last lines of a poem are usually important as they are either emphasize as they either emphasize or change the meaning of the poem is this so in the poem that we are analyzing a tiger in the zoo having seen the poetical analysis in a very detailed manner now we shall move on to the second part of our presentation to understand this particular poem a tiger in the zoo better the figurative languages that are used in this particular poem there are seven figurative languages that are used and you need to understand not only for this poem but for any poem to decode the figurative language you need to understand these particular terms simile metaphor personification symbol alliteration paradox irony we need to understand first what is figurative language poetry is normally written in language which makes ample use of figures of speech and they serve a structural purpose in poetry and make possible a richness and complexity which could not be achieved through literal statement so therefore to understand to understand poetry is imperative that one learns how to interpret figurative language so figurative language make use of many figures of speech of which the most important are simile metaphor personification and symbol so let's see now one by one the meaning of these figures of speech let's begin with the first figures of speech simile simile is a figure of speech in which two things essentially different but thought to be alike in one or more respects are compared i repeat a simile is a figure of speech in which two things essentially different but thought to be alike in one or more respects are compared so a simile is a statement of similarity introduced by like as or as if for example her hair falling down like a cascade and they for similes which make imaginative comparisons for purposes of explanation or ornament are essential in all poetry and occur frequently in prose as well secondly what is a metaphor metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to a person idea or object to which it is not literally applicable a metaphor is an implied analogy which imaginatively identifies one thing with another a metaphor is one of the tropes a device by which an author turns or twists the meaning of a word for example martin luther wrote a mighty fortress in our god a bulwark never failing mighty fortress and bulwark are metaphors a metaphor is an expression used in a new sense on the basis of similarity between its literal sense and the new thing or situation to which it is applied he is the star of the university that guy is a rat in the latter the similarity of guy and rat is not of physical details but of the feeling that a person and the rat arouses a metaphor that is commonly used may lose in mind 
the element of similarity that originally originally prompted it it then is called a dead metaphor dead metaphors are numerous in everyday speech we speak of the following for instance usually without any thought of similarity of two things a dry book a brilliant student shallow thinking and the third most important figures of speech is called personification personification is a figure of speech in which abstraction animals ideas and inanimate subjects objects are endowed with human form character traits or sensibilities in personification an entirely imaginary creature a person also may be conceived of as representing an idea or object a kind of a metaphor personification is a frequent resource in poetry and occasionally it appears in other types of writing as well so personification is a metaphor in which a lifeless object an animal or an abstract idea is to made is made to act like a person it gives human life and attributes and motives to lifeless objects animals and abstract ideas and thereby gives animation vividness and nearness so those things which are normally thought of as impersonal and aloof from human affairs it is used a great deal in everyday language in expressions like the sun smiled upon the fields the wind howled an overpowering fear seized him by the throat so what is the meaning of symbol symbol is something used for or regarded as representing something else most specifically word phrase or other expression having a complex of associated meanings in the sense a symbol is viewed as having values different from those of whatever is being symbolized a symbol is a person place thing quality or relationship that is used to stand for something other than itself in poetry we commonly meet two kinds conventional and nonce symbols conventional symbols are those which have been widely used and whose meanings are immediately understood thus a flag is a piece of cloth which stands for a nation the cross is a symbol of christianity swastika swastika was a symbol of nazi germany so many poets used the rose as a symbol of youth or beauty in contrast to conventional symbols we also find nuns symbols in poetry nuns symbol is one that is invented and used for a particular occasion its interpretation is determined by the poetic con- context of which it is a part the poet makes no outright statement about the symbolic values of his symbols but trust his context to render this meaning clear to the reader what is the meaning of alliteration alliteration is a device commonly used in poetry and occasionally in a prose the repetition of an initial sound in two or more words of a phrase line of poetry or sentence i repeat alliteration is a device commonly used in poetry and occasionally in prose it means the repetition of an initial sound in two or more words of a phrase line of poetry or sentence an alliteration is considered ornament or decoration to appeal to the ear a device to create an effect alliteration is a repetition of identical consonant sounds it performs two functions in poetry the first it provides the aural pleasure of repeated sounds second it helps to construct the poem and what's the meaning of paradox paradox means contradictory opposites so it is a statement apparently self contradictory or absurd but really containing a possible truth a self contradictory false preposition 
an opinion or statement contrary to generally accepted ideas words words comment the child is father of the man is a paradox shakespeare employed a paradox when he wrote cowards die many times before their death dying many times before death how can be a child be a father of the man this is called a paradox and the last figures of speech is called irony a figure of speech in which the literal meaning of a word or statement is the opposite of that intended in literature irony is a technique of indicating an intention or attitude opposed to what is actually stated i repeat irony is a technique of indicating an intention or attitude opposed to what is actually stated aristotle defined irony as a dissembling toward the inner core of truth so irony is a saying of one thing and meaning another irony is a saying of one thing and meaning another in the most diverse critical uses of the term irony there remains the root sense of dissembling or of a difference between and what is actually the case so among the devices by which irony is achieved are hyperbole litigious sarcasm satire and understatement so the example of irony is calling a fat friend slim whereas her weight is about 80 kg how can you call a fat friend slim isn't it an irony it's time to evaluate our understanding of today's presentation the first question is irony is a technique of indicating an intention or attitude dash to what is actually dash question number 2 a paradox can be defined as an opinion or statement contrary to generally accepted ideas is this statement true number 3 alliteration means repetition of an dash sound in dash or dash words of a phrase line of poetry or sentence question number 4 symbol is a poetical device that is used to represent something is this statement true the last one the sun smiled upon the fields the wind howled an overpowering fear seized him by the throat identify and name these poetical devices make an attempt and this will indicate your understanding although the subject that we have dealt today little hard which needs an offline class and we shall take up this later but you try your best to assimilate and understand and test your understanding today so just to recap what we have seen today we have seen what is poetical analysis we said it is a process of investigating a poem's form content structure semiotics and history in an informed way with a aim of heightening making our knowledge one's own knowledge and others is understanding and appreciate the work of the poem and there are some certain steps that i suggested in this poetical analysis first we read the poem twice and aloud then we try to understand the literal meaning and the theme third the title fourth the tone fifth the structure sixth the sound and rhythm seventh the language and imagery and finally we come to a conclusion and we also saw regarding the figurative language uh, for the six or uh, seven figurative languages that needs a little understanding from our side namely simile metaphor personification symbol alliteration paradox and irony so thank you once again for your patient listening i hope you have understood you got some idea about what is the meaning of poetical analysis and how we need to understand uh, the figurative languages which are used in the poem maybe offline classes i will take up this topic once again to make it little more clear uh, thank you for your keen listening and god bless you thank you and it's time to say goodbye